I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Uh, this weekend we're up in um, Bayfield, Wisconsin, in a north, one of the most northernmost parts of the state, uh, providing communication support for the Apostle Islands uh, Sled Dog Race. This annual event up in um, Bayfield uh, has uh, teams of eight, ten dogs, uh, sled dog races, uh, youth leagues, and um, a smaller uh, sportsman's race. Well, that intro was from the video I really wanted to make, but things didn't turn out how I was expecting. Working the race was a lot of fun, and we had a great time, but we were also presented with some significant communication issues. I think the hallmark of a good amateur radio communications team is to be able to overcome and work around most communication problems. This means you have to be flexible and very creative. You also need to be grounded in a firm expectation of what is possible and what's beyond the capabilities of your equipment. This means that you need reliable equipment and the knowledge of how to use it. This includes the ability to program or change frequencies on the fly. I guess first what we needed was a little bit of background information. The Apostle Island Sled Dog Race takes place near Bayfield, Wisconsin in the northernmost part of the state of Wisconsin. Much of the land that the race happens on is county-owned forest land. The terrain is hilly with an average elevation ranging between 880 feet at the start-finish line and just over 1,100 feet at its highest point. The 40-kilometer course modulates up and down those hills and valleys. The furthest checkpoint is only a few miles away from the net control station, which is at the starting point, but there is a lot of hills in between the two. What makes matters worse is that the start-finish point, where net control is located, is also in a gravel pit. Now, in normal circumstances, all of these issues would not be a problem, as there is a repeater located in the area that offers excellent coverage of the entire course. But when we arrived in Bayfield for the weekend, the first thing we noticed that the repeater was not properly functioning. After getting in touch with the trustees, we found out that the repeater input was bad and we're not gonna, it wasn't be suitable for use during the event. Well, we had a, identified a second repeater as a backup, but it was several miles from the event area and it was also in a lower elevation than what was desired. It served part of the course very well, but if you were located behind a hill, it would be tough for you to get into it. We also had a couple of simplex frequencies, and the group did some simplex tests previously, so we knew that simplex was an option, but simplex also posed its own problems. So first off, simplex was useful if the checkpoint could use a mobile radio or an amplifier on their handheld, and we had a few, a few uh, people that did that, but not everyone could hear all of the other stations. Now this isn't much of an issue as as long as you can hear net control you're good to go. Now all of these limitations made net control's job more difficult but not impossible. In addition to tracking all of the information that was coming on the net, the net control would have to monitor in two radio channels as some people may be on simplex and others on one of the repeaters. So looking at all of these challenges, how did our team solve this problem? Well it was a blended response of using a backup repeater, and Simplex. Simplex worked well for a few of the stations. In fact, one checkpoint that was at the highest elevation of the course was able to effectively use a handheld radio to talk to net control. For another station, he was in a hole and Simplex did not help at all. His only way to communicate was via relay to another person, which would then uh, relay his information back to the net control. Good dog. Thank you. Good job. Good job. Thank you. All right. Good job. Okay, thank you. All right. For my particular checkpoint, I could barely hear net control station, but I could hear it on my mobile radio. So I parked my car at the top of a hill a couple hundred yards away to, uh, from my checkpoint and turned on the cross-band the cross repeat feature of my radio. Now this worked with limited results 
and I was able to communicate, albeit it was a noisy and a weak signal. So for the second day of the course, I tried something a little bit different. Since the checkpoint with the handheld had a good line of sight, and I could also hear the checkpoint with the handheld quite well, we set up a second crossband repeater there, and I did a double crossband repeat into net control. So what did we learn from this exercise? Well, number one, planning is key. Prior to the event, we had a communication plan that listed all of the repeater and simplex frequencies we would use. Now, the only thing we didn't have was a list of mutual crossband frequencies. It took a little bit of coordination and programming on the fly as I had used a different set of crossband frequencies than what another ham was using in his radio, but we made it work. Next, do your research and make sure the repeater sites work. When, you're, when you are planning on using a repeater for an event, especially one that is outside your normal area, it is good to contact the trustees to not only let them know you are planning to use the repeater, but also to find out if the machine has any issues that could affect how you provide communications for the event. Knowing that information would have changed how we crafted our communications plan. Next, if you're planning on simplex, research the terrain. There are tools that you can use to visualize terrain and show if, you have, or if there are any line of sight issues uh, between any of the communication checkpoints. If you're planning on simplex, this is real handy knowing ahead of time of any limitations. I've been using this terrain tool uh, provided on a, a website called solwise. Um, uk uh, to visualize things and I'll put a link to, the, to that site in the video description below. And next, know your equipment. If you can cross band with your radio, practice using it. My location was in such a bad spot that cross band repeat was the only way I could effectively communicate to the net control. This allowed me to park my car on a high spot and use a handheld at the actual checkpoint. You know, I've got a video on crossbanding, and I'll put a link in the description below or I'll kind of look up here for it. Um, I also carry a little cheat sheet in my car on how to activate the crossband, as sometimes I don't always remember all of the steps. And, and finally, have some backup gear with you. In addition to carrying a spare handheld and plenty of batteries, because cold weather can tank a battery really fast, I also brought along my large lithium iron phosphate battery and connected it to the mobile radio in my car. Then I could leave the unit on for cross banding without fear of depleting my automobile's battery. Because who wants a dead battery out in the middle of nowhere? The only other thing I wish I had brought along was an extra antenna, a mag mount base, or a, you know, one of my J-pole antennas with a short mast. That would have allowed me to optimize my antenna location a bit better. And finally, be flexible. Brainstorming and out-of-the-box solutions are what kept our group communicating. And we had a planning meeting you know, with the team the evening before the event began, and then also a hot wash uh, after the first day. This allowed us to fine-tune our plans and make adjustments during the event. All in all, it was a challenging weekend and a learning experience for everybody involved. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I uh, kind of enjoy it when things don't always go as planned, as it gives you a chance to exercise your brain and to come up with some creative strategies to solve problems. Plus, you know, being stuck out in the middle of nowhere with only the resources you brought along even makes it a quite, a quite a bit more challenging. So how would have you solved this tricky communications issue? Or what items would you have brought along that could have been helpful in a situation like this? I'd love to hear them, so please leave a comment below. I'll filter all, through all of them and maybe even pick out the best to highlight on my next Your Questions Answered video. But for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. You know, your support of this channel drives the production of future videos, so if you like this video, give me that big thumbs up. Also, um, you know, maybe check out some of the recommended videos alongside me. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Pressing subscribe and the little bell notification will let you know when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.